All right, next on the list of things to install is this beastie looking thing. For those of you who don't know, that is a hydraulic ram that helps steer the boat. Uh, I'm completely new to these things, so I'm gonna be learning along with you guys in this video. It's finally time to get rid of this old wheel pilot too. This thing hasn't worked in about a year and a half. And ever since we put the helm back on, it's really, really tight. So uh, getting off is gonna be a little bit destructive. This thing has given us problems ever since the very beginning. It's never been strong enough to keep our boat on course, no matter how well the sails are balanced, no matter how little weather helm we have, it just wasn't strong enough to keep up. Rather than try to pull the helm back off, which I know is gonna be a pain in the ass because I had to put it on with a hammer because it was pretty tight, I am just going to cut it off. <laughs> This looks so much better. The new autopilot that we are gonna be installing is actually a hydraulic ram that gets attached to the quadrant down underneath where the Cape Horn is attached as well. Um, we do plan on using the Cape Horn pretty much all the time, especially in long ocean crossings when there's consistent wind. Uh, but sometimes it's really nice to just be able to like hit go, especially single handing or short handing the boat. So it is good to have both. They are sort of a redundant system. One takes power, one doesn't, but it should be a lot stronger, a lot more powerful than this little wheel pilot was. All right, I'm about to crawl down in the cockpit locker and install this. This is the tiller arm for our autopilot. Oftentimes you can attach the autopilot ram directly to your quadrant but ours doesn't really have a very good place to do that. The actual autopilot gets attached to this pin right here, which is bolted through. And then this little one here is for the rudder feedback sensor, this thing here. Yeah, I'm gonna crawl in and mount this one above our current quadrant. Shall we? <laughs> Kika's gonna go down the other side. Yep. <laughs> So you can see the control lines for the Cape Horn are gonna go underneath this thing. Whoa. Yeah. We'll have a little bit of redundancy because the Cape Horn is this blue line here, and then these cables are for our actual pedestal steering. Uh, and they're attached to our original quadrant, and then this autopilot tiller arm here is going to be sort of redundant. So if our, we ever break cable steering or if the Cape Horn's not working, we'll be able to have the uh, the hydraulic autopilot sort of on a, on a separate system. And then the actual autopilot ram, just like that. Somewhere about here so it has space behind. It also needs to be a very, very, very solid connection because this thing can produce 1,500 pounds of force. So whatever I do here needs to be able to absorb 1,500 pounds of push. Well, I've got the underside of the autopilot uh, shelf all fiberglass and reinforced and I'm about to put it in, but first I'm gonna take some of this thickened epoxy and just kind of like goo it along the edges so that when I install it, there's gonna be like a really good epoxy connection to the actual hull. And then I'll fare it over and, and fiberglass and tab it in from the inside. That'll about do it. Overbuilt the crap out of it, but it does need to be one of the strongest points in our entire boat because it has the potential to have a lot of force pushing against it. Oh, but my leg's asleep. It doesn't work. I can't push with my left. Push. Oh, mind over matter. Oh. Did you say mind over matter? Yeah. Oh, my foot's so asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that cures um, overnight, maybe even into tomorrow. 
I'll uh, install the rest of the components. There's a compass I need to install that also uh, senses the pitch of the boat and like sort of the motion in the sea. And I need to install the instruments and the controller and the actual brain of the thing, the computer. So yeah, while that dries up in there, I'll go do that. Blah. Here's the actual display. Very, very low profile. It's got a rubber gasket on the back. One NEMA 2000 port, that's it, which means this is powered by NEMA 2000 as well. That's the bezel that clips on top to cover the uh, mounting screws. It's got a drop line and a NEMA connector, and then, what's this? Yeah, these are the mounting screws. Cool, pretty straightforward. just the uh, the autopilot dedicated controls which is nice because this screen and the chart plotter itself um, you can run the autopilot off of and you can use it to set or correct the course but having a dedicated remote for the autopilot is nice you can just reach over hit the button it automatically engages and then you can adjust it So there you go, auto mode, standby. That's it, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Nice little piece to have, also NEMA 2000, so connected into the, the main backbone. So these are what's getting installed next. Next on the list is going to be to install this little hockey puck looking thing. This is the compass for the autopilot and it can also detect like the pitch and the roll of the boat and use that to calibrate the information coming in from the windex so when the boat's rocking back and forth it doesn't affect your apparent wind which is pretty cool. It needs to be mounted near the water line and in the middle of the boat as close to the middle of the boat as you can fore and aft and side to side. So I think I've got a pretty good spot right down in that cupboard. It's important that it lines up fore and aft. So this little tick is forward. And then this needs to line up parallel to the uh, the direction of travel of your vessel. There it is. It's mounted up inside of there. Water line of our boat is actually right here. Well, a little bit higher. It's pretty much exactly right at the water line and it's pretty close to being in the center of the boat too. So that should be a pretty good spot for it. So the sun's gone down, but that doesn't mean the workday's over. Um, up underneath here, which is above our pilot berth, I've got the AIS already installed, and I just installed this NAC3 autopilot computer. It's the brain of like what runs the autopilot control. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm just wiring it up. I've got sort of a basic wiring diagram that they sent, but it's pretty straightforward. It takes power in, um, it connects to the, NEMA 2000 network and then it's got uh, a power and a switch out to the autopilot RAM. One of the cool things about this is it's actually waterproof. Um, it has covers and gaskets and stuff to go on it but it's really the small things like the screws that hold the cover on are self-retaining. They don't just fall down and end up in your bilge somewhere. It's little things like that that I notice. Oh this is a super uncomfortable place to be though. You mean all of in there. <laughs> yeah. Really know how this works. Oh. You made it. 
<laughs> he says I never do yoga. That's all wired. Sweet. The only thing left to do is actually like install the actual RAM and the little um, rudder position sensor. And that'll be tomorrow's project because I'm tired. I'm also covered in fiberglass, so. So we had front row seats to the fireworks, but I am happy that we're a little further back because this morning we were anchored right where the barge was and that was a little bit close and I'm glad we moved because I feel like our boat would have burned down. <laughs> Okay, a few days ago we moved the boat over to closer to Peanut Island, which is that island right here, and closer to the inlet so that when we're ready to leave in a few days, it's going to be a straight shot out of here. But the cool thing about this little anchorage is that the water is much clearer than deeper in the ICW. I mean, you can see the bottom from here, which is crazy. So. While Dan is going to finish up installing the autopilot, I'm going to go and jump in for a swim and clean the hall. Oh, it's cold. I haven't freed over in a long time and with the current pushing me out it was a little bit of effort although I have to say the cleaning the hall is so much easier than what it used to be with the, the copper bottom now I just go with my hand I probably should wear gloves the next time because I have some scratches from the little barnacles they're sharper than I thought but yeah I mean you just do a quick little wipe and then it just comes out so fast it's awesome so yeah, in less than half an hour, I was done cleaning the hall. That was easy. <laughs> hey, how's it going in there? <laughs> yeah, good. This, uh, it's all cured up really nicely. How was your dive? It was good. Really yeah. good. Really cold. <laughs> the water's cold? That's not good. Um, yeah, it, it looks really good. Here, give me this. Everything is... Uh, Nice and solid, autopilot quadrant, normal steering quadrant. Let's come back out here. Autopilot ram's gonna be mounted on this platform I made yesterday. Uh, last night I was crawled up in here, uh, wiring in all the uh, AIS and the autopilot computer. Really all that's left to do is to actually bolt the thing down. You wanna pass it to me? For how small this is, this is a heavy chunk of metal. Goodness gracious. All right. Um, Here you go. Uh, how about we switch? <laughs> Are you keep holding on that hand. And there yeah. you go. The, uh, the only tricky part that I need to make sure happens is that this ram comes out. This is the hydraulic ram that comes out under power. And that's what actually will steer our boat when the autopilot's on. Uh, but what I need to make sure happens is that the quadrant turns and stops up against the actual quadrant stops, the rudder stops, before this arm is extended all the way or pushed in all the way. So that this isn't what's stopping the rudder, it's the actual like built-in rudder stops. Two centimeters of space there, about maybe an inch. And so that way I know it's not going to be hard over. And when it's all the way to the other side, I can pull it back about a centimeter. So it's pretty well centered. All right, put a little mark there. Nope. Um, 
pencil? <laughs> oh, it doesn't fit? Sharpie's too fat. <laughs> Double pencil and like Sharpie pencil. Yeah, this this bolt, this plate here. There's like a pin in this side. That you take that out and then the pin comes out, I think, and then this comes off so you can mount it. This little Allen bolt that was sitting on the washer that locks this pin in place, you thread back into the pin and then you pull the pin out. That's so freaking smart. It's like you don't it like comes with its own toolkit. And now this comes off. <laughs> that looks like a point that is going to need to be greased from time to time. The mounting bolts came with these tiny little washers. Aren't they cute? Let's be honest. I'm replacing with these big bad boys. Much stronger. I don't know if you noticed. I like to overbuild things. Something that you rarely see is this behind the scene of me <laughs> going back and forth passing Dan his tools. <laughs> Pretty much. Because if I had to climb in and out of these cockpit lockers all day, I'd never get anything done. All right. Thank you. Back to edit. All right, the last piece of equipment that I actually need to install down here is going to be the rudder position sensor, which looks like this. Um, and it gets installed, it has to be all lined up and it has to be parallel to the quadrant. And then this piece of threaded rod gets attached onto here and then gets attached onto the little nub that I put on the quadrant already. So when the rudder turns back and forth, it moves the sensor and the whole system knows exactly where the rudder position is. Still the other side? Yeah. Yeah, it's all good, man. Uh, I'm gonna have to rerun the, the Cape Horn control line a little bit. Right, so here is the rudder sensor, uh, and it has a rod running back to the new quadrant that I installed back in there. And then the autopilot ramps here. Everything looks like it's good, which means it's time to wire it. Well, it's gotten pretty late again. I just finished installing the actual ramp, and uh, I think I'm gonna call it a night, and I'm gonna call this one Done. The only thing left to do is to go out and sea trial it and calibrate the compass. We'll do that before we head out of here. That was the last big project to get installed and it's done and everything looks pretty good. So see you guys next week. Cheers. <laughs>